Hi. Uh, apologies, first of all, for the belatedness of this how-to tutorial. Uh, originally, I created the 300 RGB LED with Wi-Fi uh, back about 10 months ago. And I apologize it's taken so long for me to come back and do the how-to. Uh, life as an academic is a bit busy, and I finally got a bit of leave, so I found the time to be able to do this. So. As a reintroduction to what this uh, project is, is at a London Arduino meetup, I was introduced to a guy called uh, Christian, and he uh, had an RGB strip of LEDs. And as soon as I saw that, I thought, I've got to do something with this. So I hopped onto eBay and uh, bought a, uh, I think it was five meters um, of 60 RGB LEDs uh, per meter. So I had 300 RGB LEDs. So I started uh, manipulating them, playing around with them, uh, seeing what patterns, and eventually um, I cut them up and laid them out into a display, as we can see here. Now, the project has several uh, features. First of all, from a hardware perspective, uh, this is using an Arduino Mega. It is entirely possible to use a Arduino Uno, but what I found is that I was running out of memory. Um, so I was really taxing how much I could store on the Arduino. Uh, a little bit later on, I'll go into some uh, data management using the prog memory. Uh, but for now, I was using the Arduino Mega. Uh, originally, I was using a Wi-Fi shield, but there's so many problems with that. I've uh, completely abandoned it. I gave up yesterday trying to fix it, plumped to an ethernet shield, and everything is so much easier and works and is reliable. Uh, there's an SD card, uh, which uh, is basically storing the image data, which I'll go through uh, at a later stage. And uh, it is all connected up to a board. Um, I'm just using uh, single core doorbell wire to bridge the connections and what we've got is a basically we've got 10 rows of uh, 30 LEDs and what happens is that uh, around the back they loop up and then connect to the next row and then loop up to the next row loop up to the next row loop up to the next row so it's keeping them all in the right order they're not uh, going one way then going back the other and this is extremely important for the numbering um, and i'll go through that in more detail when i talk about the F spi led library um what this ultimately uh, achieves is uh, part art part information so there's information which is being displayed such as a message which is read off the uh, uh, the SD card. It also uh, gets some information from my website uh, by calling a uh, just a web page uh, which is broken up with uh, several bits of data. Um, this data being first of all the uh, weather. Uh, that's uh, another file which my website is using to connect up to an API from the World Weather Organization. Um, that is giving me the, for my postcode where I am, the temperature and some other data which I haven't really used yet, such as what the weather type is at the moment. Um, so I get the, uh, the temperature, I get the time, which allows me not to use a real-time clock on this uh, because I query my server every uh, 10 minutes or so, then it's keeping the time up to date. Uh, so it's got time in hours, it's got time in uh, the date, so day and month. Um, then the next steps are uh, basically self-generating patterns. So we've got the matrix style pattern, and I'll be using these in the next video to explain exactly how the SPI or the fast SPI library works. So the matrix pattern, and then we've got the droplets of water, so the raindrops. Uh, then we've got the multicolored snake, uh, which utilizes one of the features of the hue wheel of the fast SPI library. Then finally, we've got a uh, video. So I say video, it's a series of bitmap images. And these bitmap images, like a flipbook, played quickly enough, give the illusion of video. Um, and I'll go through that in another video as well. So that's pretty much the project that I've got here. And uh, so in the next steps, we're gonna be going through these one by one. And hopefully you guys can pick this up, 
do whatever you want with it. Um, ultimately, have fun. Okay, the first thing we need to go through is explain exactly how these LEDs are set up. The Arduino is up in the top left corner in this image, and the first LEDs which are being checked start off at number zero. <clears throat> so we're using a, an array, essentially. So we're starting off at zero, and along the top row, we're going through from one, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty, and we finish at twenty-nine. So now if we take a look from the back, we can see that uh, the LEDs start at zero, uh, where the Arduino is, and end at 29, and then loop back with the doorbell wire back to position and uh, going from 30. So if we take this from the front, what we can see is that we have zero through to 29, 30 through to six, uh, 59, and then it goes down to 270 through to 299 at the bottom. Looking at the wiring for this, what we have is three wires uh, that come in, the 5 volts and ground to provide power, and the uh, plugged into data port 6 is the data which is being uh, fed through and serially through the Arduino. So this is an example which comes with the FBS uh, FastFPI sorry, library. We can see that uh, we need to import in the library itself. Then define the amount of LEDs, so for my example that would be 300. Define the data pin, 6. Now I didn't necessarily in my code uh, define this because it's only used in one place, so I didn't really see the need of it. Then we create an array for our LEDs. So this is a, uh, basically it's an RGB value which is defined in the library. Um, although you may need to be careful because some strips seem to have the red and the green the wrong way around, mine definitely does. Uh, so what this does is sets up a, an array called LEDs, and for mine I used 300 uh, entries, uh, the, this example uses 40. Now the fast LED library allows you to be able to add the amount of LEDs that you want. So fast LED um, has been set up. You need to have the right chipset for what you're using. My strip uses the WS2811. There are other examples and they pretty much all work the same. The data pin, so in my examples, which I'll show later, I just use six. The LED array, so LEDs um, is one of the parameters and then we send through the amount, which is 40. Now moving on to the loop, and there's different ways that you can access this. So this is going to loop through every LED, um, so from 0 to uh, 40 or 39, and it's just incrementing each one as it goes through. But what it's doing is it accesses the array at whichever RGB LED we want to uh, access. So let's say we want to access the 10th. This LED then would be LEDs 10, so we're accessing, because it's uh, zero indexed, the 11th uh, LED, and we can set it to wh uh, whatever color we want. Now you, you can use the, the names here, white, we can use red or black or so on and so forth. Black is effectively no light. Um, we can use uh, CRGB values, um, and there's also other examples we'll look at later, so there's hues and so on and so forth. But all we're actually doing here is resetting the values in the array. This isn't actually sent through to the strip until we tell it to show. Once we say show, then it um, will send all of that array data through and buffer it through one by one by one by one by one, updating the entire array. Then we have a little bit of a delay and then we turn the previous LED to black and then it loops around and carries on and so forth. Uh, this is uh, an apology for the end of the video. Um, my intention was to go through every uh, function, every line of code and to explain it and to put together an audio visual uh, demonstration of it. But as I was going through and just to demonstrate uh, where this got to, I was, uh, some of this is you just finish watching. Um, and I was going to explain the matrix of the sound.
as I was going through, I was identifying how the characteristics of the pixels are, and I kind of realised as I was going through and kind of demonstrating all of this, I was probably going to be the hell out of pretty much anyone watching it. So what I decided to do instead um, was I gone through and I've annotated every single line of code. Um, I've taken out some things which weren't necessary and this is all there. So the links are there for you to download the uh, the Arduino code and also the PHP file which uh, hooks up to my website um, so that you can look and see how I use the WWO API. Um, so yeah, it's, the thing is, is that no one's as I was going f uh, creating the video, I realized that no one's ever going to want to create exactly the same thing that I've created. So as I've as stated in the blog, if you want to uh, look at the how I'm using the, uh, the flash memory, go ahead, rip that out, use that. Um, if you want to uh, look at how, let's say, uh, the uh, how I'm creating the snake and how I'm using the hue from uh, the fast SPI great go ahead use that um, I mean I'm all for everyone going through and hacking this apart because ultimately all of this came from other people it was all hacked apart and I'm not going to claim anything really is is mine I'm just someone who put stuff together uh, so the matrix example here so I've annotated it and hopefully that's clear enough for people to be able to read through um, I've also pasted all of that on there so it shows up in, in search engines so yeah I, the main thing is that from the video the construction um, of that has uh, been uh, shown so you guys can uh, kind of see how I built this um, I've given an explanation of how the LEDs are being accessed and then the rest of it I think yeah use as you will so hopefully this has been of help if not uh, feel free to chastise me in the comments uh, YouTube comments are a wonderful place um, and yeah uh, I mean I'll try and answer any questions as I can um, I can't guarantee it but yeah I mean hopefully you know, I've released this into the wild as it were and you guys can make what you want of it. So good luck.